I'm happy to welcome to the studio Michelle Sean back. She is the president and CEO of Christian Community Service Center, also known as CCSC. The organization is a staple of the greater Houston area and has the support of many local Catholic churches. Michelle, welcome. Thank you so much for visiting KSHJ. Looking forward to our discussion. Thanks so much for having me. For local folks who are unaware, lots of churches partner with your organization to serve the poor, the needy, the disabled, uh, all while respecting their specific cultures, their religions, their backgrounds. Tell me how you do that. Yeah, so CCSC is a coalition of 39 Christian churches, Catholic and Protestant churches, united in service to the needy. And there's really three pillars to our work, which I know we'll talk about, basic needs, children, and workforce development. And we bring together churches who want to engage in the community. It's important as disciples of Christ that each of us authentically work to alleviate poverty. And so we bring people together to volunteer, to donate their time, to contribute resources, and to be part of our organization as we address those needs. And it's 39 wonderful churches, uh, diverse in theology, uh, diverse in size, but we come together for acts of mercy for people in our community. I want to talk about one of the big challenges for a lot of people in our area, and that is the high price of food. Right. Uh, I know you guys run a couple of food pantries. What is the situation like right now? Yeah, such an insightful question. So yes, uh, food prices are up. Um, inflation is cooling. However, prices remain high. And for a working family that is trying to meet their basic needs, rent, utilities, food, all those things have gone up. And so while it might be an inconvenience for many of us, it is harrowing for someone living on a very limited income. So when you look at our numbers, 2022 through 2020 through 2022, we were in some form of disaster mode with the pandemic, right? Mm -hmm. So 2023, our best comparison is to look at 2019 pre-pandemic. So if you compare those two years, we are helping 25% more households than we did in 2019, giving out 25% more food packages. Mm -hmm. And that probably will continue to increase. And so we are seeing it with working families. It's just been devastating. But also, it's hard for folks on a limited income. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking of a particular client, and he is elderly. He lives on a fixed income. He worked all of his life. He had a limited wage. He lives on about $1,000 a month, which is tough, right? And so super tough for him to see this increase. And so he comes to us regularly to augment um, his situation. And so we're able to provide groceries for him. And there's lots of folks in our community who are older or disabled and their income is limited. And so this is an extremely difficult time for them. Absolutely. It's like just thinking about all the ripple effects of the pandemic, uh, just hard to think about everything has been impacted as a result, like you say, in this particular case, price of food. Can you tell me more about what it's like to actually run a food pantry? So many churches work with you guys yep. as opposed to having their own food pantry. Why do you think that practically works for so many churches in our greater Houston yeah, area? Yeah, again, a great question. So it's about efficiency, right? So if you look at our 39 churches, what would that be like if 39 churches ran a food pantry, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's doable, but collectively, by combining resources, we're more impactful. We can serve more people. And when I'm talking about combining resources, I'm not just talking about dollars, although that matters too. It's also about human resources. So the folks that are in our two food pantries who are sacking groceries, stocking, um, unloading food drives, which we de depend heavily on, those are volunteers. Um, volunteers primarily who sit in the pews of our churches. So the impact is bigger when we work together. And it's just much more efficient in the community to have um, CCSC running two food pantries than for there to be 39 of them. And as you mentioned, you have a lot of volunteers who are helping with those food pantries and distribution. You guys also have a lot of help with volunteers helping with clothing and yes. distribution of that yes. as well. Uh, tell us about just some of those other programs that you had uh, mentioned. Uh, like you said, you'd mentioned workforce development was another right. thing you guys do. Yeah, right. So a great way, a great visual I look at in terms of looking at CCSC's mission is that there's three pillars. One is basic needs, and that's the food pantries. 
um, clothing, hygiene items, and then we're able to do limited amounts of assistance for rent or utilities for folks who undergo a one-time crisis. So that's basic needs. Pillar two is targeted children's needs. We have a Christmas program. We just wrapped it up and helped 2,500 kids with toys, books, and food. We'll help um, 4,000 kids in August to have brand new school supplies, brand new backpack, brand new clothing. And then the Louise J. Uh, uh, Louise J. Moran Vision Care Program works during the academic year, and we do vision screening at some low-income schools and essentially put eyeglasses on the faces of kids. So that's pillar two. And the third one is workforce development. So what we're looking for there is to increase families' overall financial security. A lot of our folks who come to us are working. Some aren't. Some are on a job search. So in that area, we have three programs. One is JobNet, and we work with folks to find a job. Uh, We upgrade their skills. Uh, We have volunteers who work there and do mock interviews and resumes and and coaching there. And then we have two programs that are more entrepreneurial in nature. And so our vision with those two programs is to train people in particular skills and for them to go up and go out and open up their own business. And one of them we've been running for 20 years. It's called Martha's Way. And it trains mainly women, although we've had men come through, um, to operate a business doing residential house cleaning, housekeeper. Mm-hmm. And we have great outcomes over the last 20 years of really raising household income. And so some of those women are making $25, $30 an hour. They do superb work. And so kind of mirroring that, we started a program actually in the midst of the pandemic that trains men or women to become non-medical direct home caregivers. Wow. And that's okay. a growing field, yeah. right? Many of us are going to want to age in home. Many of us need the help. And so we are training people to do that. So those are the three workforce programs. However, what we've woven into that is a coaching model. And so we have two people on staff who are professional coaches. And our premise is very few people walk into our facility needing help with one thing. There might be, and usually are, other things going on in the family. And so the coaches primarily work with clients in the workforce development area because those clients are are not in crisis. And so they can work on a variety of of needs like personal needs, budgeting, um, business budgeting. If you're going to graduate from one of our programs, personal budgeting, um, resiliency plans, career coaching, things like that. And we've really found that to be helpful to propel clients forward to be successful. What an incredible blessing for so many people who are in such, could be in in some cases such dire straits, and they know they can come to you guys and help, even if it's such a small way to take steps in the right direction. Absolutely. And one of the things that we really try and do is create a safe place, safe space, right? Mm -hmm. And so that, to me, is part of being a Christ-centered organization. We are called to see the divine, the face of Christ on each first person who comes through. Mother Teresa, one of her famous quotes is that Christ comes to us in a distressing disguise. So we are called to see the face of Christ on each person who comes through. And thinking about workforce development and coaching, folks may have had trauma in their life, mild trauma, major trauma, and for them to be able to close a door and talk to someone safely and develop a resiliency plan, so to say. We might refer out to other agencies to get additional assistance, but that sense of safety and security really can transform someone. If you're just now joining us on Catholic Lunch Break, my name is Wyatt Goolsby. I'm talking with Michelle Sean Beck. She is president and CEO of CCSC. We've been talking about the organization and all their work here in the greater Houston area. Michelle, I had mentioned you guys draw volunteers from all over, especially those 39 churches yep. that partner with your organization. And in doing so, you call yourself an ecumenical organization. Tell me what that word means, ecumenical, and why you think that's such an important part of the mission of CCSC. Absolutely. It's actually in our cultural value statement. Mm-hmm. So CCSC was formed in 1980, but of course, like any organization, there had been some work going on a couple of years before that. So think about the late 70s. And there was a sense that Christians ought to be working together to alleviate poverty, 
and that Lutherans and Catholics and Methodists and Baptists and non-denominational and every denomination ought to be able to set aside theological differences and come together because we don't have to agree on theological matters to agree that a hungry family needs food. Someone looking for work ought to have the best chance to be successful in his or her life. And so that was, you know, a little bit radical in the late 70s. Mm -hmm. Um, And so we were incorporated in 1980 and have steadily grown since then. And that sense of we are all united as followers of Christ, it is essential to our discipleship that we serve others and see the sacred on the other. We can vote differently. We can worship differently, but we can come together under the umbrella of Christianity and improve our community and better the lives of our neighbors in need. Michelle, I do want to say on a personal note, I was really appreciative of being able to be with you guys and have some fun at the CCSC annual gala, which was back yeah. in September. Yeah. It's known as the Azalea Gala here in, in Houston. And you guys honored Father Phil Lloyd, mm-hmm. who is the pastor of St. Teresa Catholic Church in Memorial Park yep. area. Uh, tell me a little bit about why you guys chose to honor Father Phil uh, and, and give him a a little bit of an award for all the work that he's done over the years. Yes, well, thank you for being at the gala. It was great to have you there. Um, We love our gala. We celebrate our mission. And so we always want to honor someone who embodies our mission. And Father Phil has been engaged and supportive of CCSC for over 20 years. Um, Before St. Teresa in the late 90s, early 2000s, he was at St. Vincent de Paul Catholic Church, super supportive there. And he embodies our mission. Um, There is such an authenticity with Father Phil in wanting to resolve suffering. Uh, You can see that in his parish. Uh, People are so drawn to him because of his openness. So he has been a big cheerleader for CCSC and has really embodied the ecumenical spirit for which our coalition and the the people who believe in us work towards. And so it it was fun to honor him. And as you remember, he's such a humble person. He did not give up, get up and give a give big speech. Right. He, he got up and said <laughs> thank you and I think maybe acknowledged his parish. And that's so representative of the authenticity that he brings to his work. Absolutely. It was so nice to be there with you and, and Father Phil and to, and to honor him. And you're right, very, very humble guy. Yeah. Michelle, I want to take a moment to ask you personally what it's been like to run CCSC and be part of the organization? Because I imagine you, the staff, the volunteers have to work really hard with everything that you do, but I imagine it's also very rewarding. Absolutely. Thank you. Um, A big shout out to the CCSC staff. Our team works hard year round um, and, and dealing with human need and human suffering is challenging. I think that people who go to work for an organization like CCSC, they are looking for a way to live their faith. I know I am. And we want our lives to have meaning and to transform other people's lives. And so members of our staff, our team, um, come together and want to share their skills to make a difference in the lives of others. It is hard work. Um, When you work Mm -hmm. in the nonprofit sector, you are always under-resourced and the needs are huge. Um, And so I think for for me, having a well of faith, being the driver, helps to take all the challenges and to see those as opportunities for grace. For me, and I know for members of our team, our faith is essential to what we do. Well, we will ask our listeners with the Guadalupe Radio Network, we'll continue to pray for all of the church's organizations that associate with the CCSC, all the work that you do, and certainly for people who are interested in volunteering or donating, we'll urge them to check out the website, which is ccschouston.org. Did I get that right, You Michelle? did, okay, absolutely. Excellent. Michelle Schoenbeck, President and CEO of Christian Community Service Center, thank you so much for being with us here in the studio. Such a pleasure. Thank you so much, Wyatt.